Hello, my beautiful, shiny, iridescent, phosphorescent, bioluminescent, oh my god, what is this? Anyway, hey guys, uh, it's your good buddy Sam, and it's time for some more, uh, once again, it's time for some more very exciting mechs. Um, I feel, ba it's been a long time since you, uh, I was about to say it's been a long time since I've heard your voice, but of course I can't hear your voice, and I can't say it's uh, it's been a long time since I've heard my voice, because that's the kind of thing a crazy person would say. So I don't know. I'll just I'll just apologize and say that it's been over two months since I made a tutorial, which is crazy. Um, I've just been super busy between getting back to the states, uh, working my one full time job, which is working at Max MSP, and working my other full time job, which is just being incredibly lazy all the time. Uh, I haven't had time to sit down and make a tutorial. Um, and also I'm kind of planning on doing some more in-depth, uh, multi-part, structured, actually uh, useful tutorials as opposed to these kind of one-off, you know, uh, just sort of facts into the wind, if you will, and I hope you don't. Um, but in any case, I wanted to sit down and just kind of make one right now. Uh, it's not even really a tutorial, I just wanted to talk about an object that I've been getting a lot of use out of. Uh, and that object is called vb.stretch. Uh, it's basically a wrapper around uh, something like the Paul stretch algorithm um, for doing super long uh, stretches of sound. So taking short sounds, or I don't know, taking any length sound and just blowing them up to massive lengths in a way that basically destroys the original sound, uh, but makes a really cool texture in its place. So to find the VB stretch object, you can go to the Max Objects database at maxobjects.com. And you can search VB Stretch, and the really cool thing is that you won't find it. I think that's hilarious. Instead, you have to search for Freeze, and Freeze will take you all the way down here to VB Freezer tilde. VB Freezer tilde links you to the um, ESB objects for Max MSP, and way down at the bottom, you will find here VB Stretch. And if you click back here at the bottom, this will actually take you to the website for the Elektronisches Studio Basel. Um, apparently it's an electronic studio in, in Basel, which is pretty cool. I guess uh, VB must stand for someone at this school. Let's see, Personen. Mm, let's see, who could it be? Ah, yeah, VB probably stands for Volke Böhm, the Leitung. This is great. Look, Robert Herman is not just, I mean, okay, so other people here are, you know, professors, and this guy's in audio design. Robert Herman is the Tonmeister. He's the master of tone. That's fucking awesome. Good on you, Robert Herman, tone master. Congratulations. All right, let's stop wasting time. Oh, that's a cool effect. Let's stop wasting time on this website and focus instead on downloading VB Stretch. So you click on it like that, it downloads in two seconds because you have a fast modern internet connection. And then to install it, of course, all you do is go to uh, Max, and then in Psyching 74, the best way to, de to install any of this Max stuff is just to unzip the thing, and then uh, take this VB stretch thing and just drop it, drop it right into your Cycling 74 folder inside of the Max app. I'm not gonna do it because mine is already there because I've already played around with it. So anyway, how do you actually use this VB stretch object inside Max? Um, <clears throat> if you try to make a VB stretch object, you'll find that it doesn't work. Don't panic, it's okay. VB stretch is just one of those objects that needs a, it needs a little something more, you know? It's not like, not like Cycle, uh, which is a terrible joke, but Cycle, it's not like the village bicycle that is Cycle. Uh, like, you know, everyone's had a ride, it's like its own. Okay, so anyway, VB stretch can't just take uh, no arguments. You have to give it some arguments. Specifically, you have to give it the name of a buffer, and you have to give it an FFT size. Uh, VB stretch does its time stretching using the FFT, and as a consequence, you have to give it, uh, tell it how big an FFT buffer to use. And this is all stuff that comes right out of the help file that I'm basically just gonna walk you through now. Again, not so much a tutorial, as more of a show and tell of this dope object that I've been using to get all kinds of good sounds out of. So, in any case, uh, let's take a closer look here. You can see that the way this object basically works, VB stretch, foo, and then 16384, uh, the FFT size. The FFT size has to be a power of two for reasons that have to do with uh, the algorithm and how you calculate an FFT. Um, actually, this is kind of embarrassing since like, I don't know, the early 90s, we've been able to handle FFTs that weren't power of two, so shame on you person who provided me with this great object for free. How dare you not do it 
exactly to my exacting standards. Um, so the way this object works is, let's see, let's replace uh, no, Anton.AIF is that built-in violin sound built into Max, and you can see uh, the basic idea, you can start playback, and it starts playing back the sound. You can see it very slowly panning through the sound, and this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, this stretch factor here uh, determines how quickly it plays through the sound. So stretch factor of one means it, means it plays through the sound in real time. Let's jump back to the beginning. Stretch factor of 16 means it plays through the sound at 1 16th normal speed. Which, you know, pretty cool. Um, a few things to keep in mind here. One is that um, this seek time in milliseconds doesn't do precisely what you want. So supposing I start playback and then push freeze. So pushing freeze locks the sound in place and stops it from moving back and forth in the in the sound file. So you're just actually hearing this frozen texture. And I have to admit, it sounds really cool. Um, but one thing that you'll notice is that if you change the seek time, uh, let's see, we're at 6.15, we start seeking forwards. As it shifts into the next FFT frame, you hear one fade out and the other fade in, but it doesn't actually recalculate anything between the two frames. So your temporal resolution is limited by the FFT size. So if we jump back to the beginning and play it again, uh, so the stretch factor to one. You can hear that we're not hearing all the detail in the sound. You can make the FFT size a little bit smaller, say 4096. It's actually as small as it goes. Um, but then the sound quality starts to go down. So listen to this. So we actually hear more of the sound. The sort of temporal quality isn't so affected, um, but the sound quality is really starting to go down. As the help patch says somewhere in this thing, uh, choose larger sizes for better sounds. Uh, they're not kidding to some extent. The bigger the the so it's a trade-off. The bigger the FFT, the um, the uh, better it's going to sound. In essence, you're not going to hear so many weird frequencies. And in fact, I mean, if you start playing this guy back and then freeze it, and start to mess with this magnitude threshold here, which essentially just cuts out uh, frequencies that are below a certain magnitude. As you get up there, you really hear some nasty kind of uh, FFT-related, frequency-related um, artifacts start to come up. It almost sounds like a bad um, video encoding or bad MPEG encoding. Like if you listen to a low-quality song or watching a low-quality YouTube video, totally unlike mine, uh, like, not like the perfect shining golden quality videos that I encode. Um, am I talking about? Anyway, uh, so if you make the FFT size quite large, though, you get, uh, in some sense, better sounding sounds, but uh, you have even less temporal fidelity, even less, uh, you totally blur out the sound. And really, this object is made for doing super long time stretching anyway. So the idea would be that you aren't necessarily um, worried so much about maintaining the quality of the sound. Really, you just want to make some interesting textures. Um, so more parameters opens up even more cool stuff. Supposing we start playing this thing back, and then freeze it, and then turn on uh, pitch shift. We can start to shift the pitch down. which is actually shifting by uh, shifting pitch rather than shifting the FFT bins, which is cool. So if you jump up by 12 cents, or no, 100, wait, 1,200 cents, that's an octave up, and minus 1,200 cents is an octave down. As you probably can hear. An even cooler effect comes when you turn on layers. Uh, so layers actually lets you add many shifted pitches essentially all at once. So here you can specify where you like those pitches shifted to, and here you uh, can specify their relative um, amplitudes. So I can turn on layering and then start to mess with these amplitudes. Listen to that motherfucking sound. Oh my god, so cool. 
Uh, you can tweak these gains and get a really crazy chorus effect going. Mess with the relative harmonicities of these things. And personally, I really find that um, this is where the um, FFT size really starts to matter when you start to switch on layers. So like, you listen to this really quickly. That's what we're working with now. And I listen to what happens when I uh, make the FFT size much bigger, like say 65, 536. Is that two to the power of a million billion? Mm, hopefully. Uh, anyway, if I now, let's see, jump to the beginning, uh, mix, and then freeze it. Now listen to, well, A, listen to how much better this sounds. Let's unfreeze it. Oh, listen to how little temporal fidelity we have. Okay, now we turn on layering. And listen to this. Just like, what a texture. Oh my god, the coolest sound ever. You may notice, by the way, that with the FFT size set this big, if I drop all these gains to zero really quick, you don't hear the sound for about two seconds. And that's because even if you tell it not to, VP Stretch does some interpolation between frames. Uh, even if you set the slide here to zero, you'll still hear some interpolation. It crossfades into the next frame, which is sort of annoying, but it's just, you know, it's the nature of the beast. It's how the object works. And uh, just really quickly before I wrap up here, I want to play for you uh, how this sounds with this um, viola sound here. So I just loaded, I just loaded up the sound of this dude playing a, a viola. It sounds sort of like an organ, actually. So here's the original sound. I'm gonna freeze it. Um, Sounds so good. And then add in the layers. And just like, how phenomenal is that sound? It's a really great texture. Anyway, that's about going to do it for this video. I hope you found that interesting and entertaining. Go download the VB Stretch object and all of its mm, VB Stretchy friends. And uh, yeah, look forward to more tutorials hopefully coming very soon in the future. And more, uh, sort of, I guess it's more of an object spotlight. Let's call it that, an object spotlight. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you guys again in the future. Thanks very much and take it easy.